In this photograph, there's a young woman named uh, Majabin, and she's 13. P was a farmer and had been gambling with her father. Her father lost the bet, and then they went to the tribal council, and they said that, you know, since he couldn't pay the debt, that he uh, had to give Muhammad uh, his daughter. The other thing is that while Muhammad was very nice, I asked him, like I said, don't you think she's a little bit young? And he, and he kind of laughed, and he goes, well... We have a saying out here that if she doesn't fall down when you hit her with your cap, she's old enough to marry. They don't really understand the term journalist, per se, but I always told them very honestly about that I was looking into this issue of, of young marriage, and often I was brought by their family members there, who I was also very clear with with what I was doing. My translator and his best friend, who brought me to their house, this was the best friend's uncle, and that translator was killed he was uh, he was killed by the Taliban. He was beheaded, actually, um, by, for working with journalists. Uh, he was working with an Italian journalist at the time. Roshan was very, very young. She doesn't even have her adult teeth yet. She was engaged, and they had a small party, but barely so. I mean, the party consisted of her running around playing with her friends, and then they slaughtered um, a goat. They did it to kind of... Um, make the engagement official. And so um, she's definitely playing peekaboo <laughs> in that image. And uh, and I was like, when I was taking the picture, I couldn't even believe it. She just really had no idea how her life was changing that day. So I met Gulam when I took a trip to Gore province. You know, it's so rural and there's no roads, there's no communication, no phones, nothing reaches out into these villages. They don't even have a working well in the neighborhood where um, Gulam lives. This was um, on her engagement day. We were walking and she just started picking these berries. Before that, I hadn't really seen her smile much at all. But at that moment, she was just kind of lit up and she was just kind of being a kid for a few minutes. And I just was trying to kind of make her feel at ease. And I was asking her about school and, you know, if she liked being in school. And she loved it. And she wanted to be a teacher. You know, she was saying how she hadn't been in school for two months because that's when she heard she was going to be engaged. And so I asked her what she thought about, you know, her engagement that day. And she said, I don't know, with such a, such a seriousness, she just said, how am I supposed to feel? I don't even know this man. Being a couple years older, I think that she was aware to some level of what her future might hold and that she wasn't going to be with her family anymore and there wouldn't be anyone to protect her. Most of the men told me that some of the girls who were engaged would not be married for several years. Um, but I had the women in the family pull me aside and said, no, 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 she'll be married within a year. <laughs> and then even one, another young bride that I met she said that her husband, the day after her engagement, her husband was allowed by the family to come over and do everything with her but sleep with her. And so she would run around the bed, around and around, just afraid of him. I, I mean, even though the men will, tell, will say one thing, I, I tend to believe what the women say because they're the ones living it. I find that the women are often part of this problem, and I, it's just because they don't even value their own existence. And part of this, I mean, one of the problems that they have in these areas is that the mother-in-laws will often treat these new wives really bad. <laughs> it's the way they were treated, and it's just kind of the, the process. And, you know, unfortunately, these young women who this, who this has happened to them might do the same thing, you, you know. And so it's just a way that people expect to be. While working on this story, I was able to meet um, a number of amazing women who were dealing with the issue of child marriage and one of them I mean probably one of the most amazing women I've met ever was a woman named Malalai Kakar and she was a police officer in Kandahar and had been for more than 20 years I had uh, met with her and told her what I was looking for and she said yes there's child marriage all over the place here <laughs> and um, one night when I was sitting in my hotel uh, she called me and was like you know Stephanie you have to come over here right away and uh, and so I kind of jumped up and ran over to the police station and she was there in the room with a young woman named uh, Jamila which means beautiful in Arabic actually and she was 15 years old her husband had stabbed her and her grandmother when he found out that she had tried to visit 
her mother without his permission. And so obviously Malalai had thought this was ridiculous and called me and was horrified uh, by by this. And what I love about this picture of her is she's just kind of like holding him, like showing him off, you know, that she had this guy in her grips, you know. But the thing is, as I asked her, I said, you know, what's going to happen to this guy? And she was like, well, of course, nothing's going to happen. And she kind of just chuckled. And then she was like, men are kings here. And she, um, unfortunately, uh, late last year, she was killed for her beliefs. She was shot um, by the Taliban and where and her son was injured as well. Yeah, she was, I mean, she was totally badass. I'm not going to lie. She was amazing. <laughs> Marzia was actually the first girl that I met who I had, um, who I knew for sure she was married very, very young. And she was 15 in this photograph, but she was married when she was nine. And I think that, you know, in, in this image, she's, her, her burns are being cleaned um, after she set herself on fire, after, uh, you know, being afraid of her husband's reaction to breaking the family television set. So, I mean, obviously that's a very extreme thing to do but it's obviously bigger than that. And that was kind of why I started really investigating the issue of child marriage, because what is so bad in their lives that they would rather set themselves on fire than, than you know, run away or, you know, withstand what they're going through. And I also think that because they're very uneducated, they don't really know what's going to happen. It's always a suicide attempt. I don't think any of them think they're going to live, and so they don't realize that they're going to be disfigured and treated even worse probably afterwards as a result of being disfigured. If your wife or daughter is away from the house for even just a night, the community will often shun you. The girls are often not welcome back in the house. If they run away from their marriages, a lot of times they'll be put in prison uh, for running away from their marriages because there's nowhere else for them to go. But slowly there have been more shelters uh, put in place. Uh, this one it was put up by the government in Afghanistan. It's actually on the border with Iran. And so they are getting some support. I mean, there's independent organizations. Um, you know, there are groups of people trying to combat this, but they have a long way to go. And I think that as the war kind of continues to rage on there, you know, it's not something that um, is really a priority. This is a funeral of a woman named Rakshana who was married um, as a child and then um, her husband left and went back to Iran and then came back for her many years later and she was already remarried. But the tribal um, leader said that she had to go back with her first husband and so she set herself on fire and this is at her funeral. And yeah, there were no women allowed to attend this funeral. Um, they kind of were only allowed to stay in the village area, which you can see in the far background there, um, because the men said that they were the women were too emotional to attend the funeral, and they're never allowed to, to attend any funerals. They washed her body, so I mean, it was um, a little bit strange to me that they would allow be able to do something so intimate as to wash the body, but not be there during the cer ceremonial part. I didn't really get a chance to know Rakshana because she was so badly injured by the time I met her, but I did meet her family and her family was very, very adamant that I witness the moments before her death and her death. And you know, that's what this is. I mean, this is one of the nurses holding a rose up to her nose just a few minutes before she died from her burns. Even though Ghulam is holding her nephew in this photograph, I think it's very emblematic of what her future is probably like by now, actually. Well, I expect that when I go back, if I can find some of these girls, that most of them will have children, if they're still alive. I mean, the other issue with this is maternal mortality. You know, their bodies aren't, they're very young, and so their bodies are, you know, not quite um, through puberty, and a lot of them die during childbirth. So I expect that some of them will be alive, some of them won't, and if the ones that are um, will definitely have children if they're capable. <laughs>